All right, good day guys. My name's Ollie and welcome to my channel. So today I've decided to take on a topic which could be um, problematic, but anyway, um, it's filters and filters specifically for one-shot color cameras. Um, now look, when you get into astrophotography, you know, normally filters is one of the things you hit pretty early. And um, a lot of that is about the fact that, you know, you've possibly started off with a DSLR camera and you're finding maybe that your images are a bit washed out or you're trying to get more detail or you can take longer exposures, whatever that is, but filters you'll hit pretty early. Um, so you like, like I said, it's a pretty difficult subject to tackle and I'm not gonna go into super amounts of detail here to try and cover every single aspect of filters because it is complicated. Um, and actually there's a lot of opinions as well on whether or not people think certain filters are even, are even worthwhile using. And of course, at the, right at the outset here, I should state that, you know, one alternative, of course, to using certain filters at least, is that you can just go to a dark sky site. So for me, my backyard is a Bortle 5, which is sort of a moderate light pollution zone, Bortle 5.6. Um, and of course, if you can go out and if you've got easy access to a very low light pollution area, like in the country, a Bortle 1, then certainly for like, um, you know, certainly for the broadband um, light pollution filters, I would suggest don't even worry about them. If you can get out there like relatively frequently, then obviously that's, you know, that's the premium way to go. Just go out to a really low light pollution site and you can often get some phenomenal images from those types of um, really nice clear skies. But obviously that's not an option for most people and it's not really an option for me because I want to be able to image from my backyard on a regular basis. Um, and that's why people generally start looking at filters. So, like I said, one-shot color cameras. Um, so I started off with my Canon 6D um, Astro Modified, so it means it's had one of the filters removed in front of the sensor so it can let more of the uh, emission lines that we're interested in to the actual camera sensor. Um, and then, of course, there's dedicated astrophotography cameras like these ones. And these are by ZWO. And the main difference, there's, there's more differences, but the main one is that these are cooled cameras. So it keeps the sensor nice and cold, which means that you get a lot less noise in your images. But anyway, the filters that I'm talking about really apply to both of these cameras. So in terms of the filters, yeah, for the, um, if you've got a non-modified, so just a standard DSLR camera, I'd probably only be looking at considering um, broadband just light pollution filters like this Astronomic or this Optolong L Pro. Um, but otherwise, these filters are kind of applicable to all of these cameras. Um, so let's start off with the, the main one that people begin with, broadband light pollution filters. So my very first filter was an Astronomic CLS CCD filter. Um, and it was the first filter I got to just put on my imaging train with my Canon 6D. And I just used to screw this into the front of my tear adapter, which is a two inch tear adapter. Um, and yeah, I certainly did notice some difference. I noticed a bit of contrast difference. Um, you know, was it mind blowing? Probably not, but they certainly can be useful. Um, and the second filter I got after that was a, um, an Optolong L Pro filter. Um, so yeah, the two inch, I got a two inch L Pro filter after that. Um, and again, these are, these are quite good as well, but very similar to the, actually to the astronomic CLS CCD. I was thinking maybe they'd be a bit better or, but they are actually, it's, it's actually fairly similar. I'd say it's, I'd say it's a little bit better. And um, the other thing to think about is, you know, if you are kind of sticking with just the DSLRs and you're not necessarily thinking of upgrading, um, these little clip-in versions of filters can be quite good. So if I'm going out and I just want to take my DSLR, um, then sometimes what I'll do is I'll just put this clip in filter like this and basically all that you do is you this is for the uh, Canon 6D so full frame Canon and all you do is you just flip up the mirror this goes in and then the mirror comes down and holds these this in place and the main use I've found for these is especially when I'm taking pictures of the Milky Way from my backyard I just find I get a better contrast with these like um, kind of a darker sky if you like so it seems to handle you know sort of I guess dull down that sort of light pollution um, effect that you get 
so it makes image processing a bit easier. But if I'm being honest, these days I do not use these kind of um, broadband light pollution filters that much. Um, I'll probably will use these now and again now if I'm taking um, galaxies just again to help maybe with contrast and light pollution and I know especially people in higher bottle zones um, will use these um, like the Optolong L Pro filters um, when they're taking images of galaxies as well. So they definitely have their use, I just don't use them as often um, as I used to. Um, so the other filters then we go on to, once we leave once we leave those broadband filters alone, the other filters we go on to are the duo narrowband filters. And these come in, again, a bunch of different brands. I have the Optolong L Extreme, which is this one, which is again, a two inch mounted filter. So you've got the thread on one side to thread into, you know, your T adapter. Sometimes the field flattener has a thread on it that you can thread these into, or of course, like a filter tray, like I've got there. Um, and I have the Optolong L Extreme, and I also have, I guess you'd call it its little brother, which is the Optolong L Enhance. And the only difference between the two really is the fact that the L Enhance has a 12 nanometer band pass, and the L Extreme has a seven nanometer band pass. So it basically just means the amount of light that it's letting in, the, the band pass is even narrower. So it means that you, know, you can take even longer exposures and really sort of, again, you know, not begin to wash out your photo. Um, so these duo narrowband filters are the, the filters that I predominantly tend to use now. Of course, they're mainly for emission nebula, where you're really wanting to absorb all those, um, you know, the hydrogen alpha and the O3. Um, so, you know, that's actually a good example in the background. So that's the Dolphin Nebula, which I did as a collab with a friend. And I was able to do 10 minute exposures with this Optolong L Extreme to really try and grab as much of that blue in there as I could. And also as much of the red in that that I could. Um, so, you know, those being able to do those 10 minute subs and really try and grab as much as you can that's when you you know you really do need these these sort of filters you're just not going to do that with a you're not going to do that with a broadband um, filter so they're the rough two classifications of filters um like i said the other thing is just the way that the filters um the way that you want them to go into your imaging train so that's a zwo um, filter drawer that just connects to one side of the camera and then the other side obviously it connects to your field flattener on your telescope or whatever. Um, another way is, here's an example here with a Canon EF lens. So this is a Samyang 135 Canon EF. This is really useful. So this is a ZWO filter drawer made for the Canon lenses. And basically, as you can see here, it's got a bayonet fitting. So you can actually pull that back and click it off. And that's just put it back on, clicks into place. So now you can obviously attach again your camera here, your dedicated astro camera, and you can use your Canon lenses. You know, and often that's a great way to start astrophotography because you can still use all the lenses, you know, that you've got, especially if you've got some really nice prime lenses. Um, and again, so that's your, again, that's your filter drawer there, which has currently got the L Enhanced filter in it. So really you know, nice little way to just put your filters in and out. Um, one last thing just to consider is pretty much for all astrophotography, you are gonna want at least, um, even if you're not using a broadband filter, like you know the L-Pro or something, you are at least gonna want an IV, um, an IV you are, um, uh, sorry, let me get this right. You are at least gonna want a IRUV cut filter in your imaging train. Um, Especially like, so if you've got a Canon full spectrum modification on your camera, you will want some sort of just a basic um, IRUV cut filter in your imaging train. Otherwise you'll tend to get that, that real bloating around your stars and fringing because that's basically light that your optics can't focus. Um, now with the one shot color cameras, 
um, dedicated astro cameras. This ASI 2600 comes with it built into the cover that goes in front of the sensor, so that's already got it built in. However, with this one here, this is a 533, you can see I've got a little one and a quarter inch Optolon UV um, IR cup filter in there. So I can probably just show you that on the camera. And that's just screwed in front of the sensor. So, you know, if I just want to use the camera as it is now, I don't even want to use a, a light pollution filter, that's all I need in there. So, you know, just, just worth considering, obviously, how you're going to take your images and whether or not you're going to need one of those. Of course, if you're using a, uh, just a standard DSLR camera, you're not, going to, you're not going to need that. It's going to be fine as is. Um, one more thing is obviously just keep your filters clean if you can. So often, you know, quite often just blow the dust off them, especially if you're changing a filter or putting a filter in for the first time, just to make sure there's no dust on it. Um, and cleaning your filters. I have had to clean my filters where, you know, accidents happen and I've got fingerprints on my filters and you're like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? Now for me, I just use some of the um, solution that I actually got from an astronomy shop. Um, I can't remember what the mix is in that solution, but it's something like, you know, it's, what do they call it? Iso, isopropyl and water sort of mix. Um, and then I use some Kimtech cleaning wipes, but I'd recommend if you are gonna clean your filter like that, if you can actually physically clean smudges off of it or something, just go online and do a bit of research before you do that because you don't wanna damage, you don't wanna damage the surface of your, of your filters. So I'd recommend just do a little bit of research before you actually physically start cleaning the front of your, the surfaces of your filters. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much a broad overview of um, filters in the in the world of one shot color astrophotography. So, as you can see, I've been through a few filters over my over my time, and you know we are getting to the stage now where even with the duo narrowband filters, there's a couple more coming onto the market now which are even narrower again. Optolong has one coming out this year. I think it's the Optolong L Ultimate maybe. And Antilla has one. Um, and I think they're down to five nanometers and maybe even lower for the Optolong. I'm not sure yet, because it's not out. So it's probably a good time as well if you want something like a L Extreme or an L Enhance. I've found that there's actually quite a few out there secondhand. So it's not a bad time to be probably looking to get a a good deal on one of those filters and you can often save yourself you know a quarter to a third of the new price and um, so that's that's also an option so i hope overall that's been a little bit useful guys um as a bit of an introduction to one shot color um, filters you know there's often more than one way to do any task and i find there's very rarely absolutes in this hobby um, but broadly speaking, that's how I use my filters and that's the filters that I have. So hope that's been useful and um, I'll catch you guys next time.